afternoon, good night. I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. I hope that today finds you in good health and in good spirits. And thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to listen to little old me. Um, today I wanted to talk about this video I was sent. Um, they're talking about um, Santa Claus being white and Jesus being white. And I just wanted, there's a gentleman, I can't read his name because it's too blurred, who's rebutting um, these words that were that came from Megyn Kelly. It was said in 2013, but every year it gets brought up again. And this guy's brought it up again this year. So I thought I would share it with you because he makes some sense. And when people make sense, in my in my in my mind, what is wrong with this thing? Oh, phones. Anyway. Here's the reality. The image of a white Jesus has been used to justify enslavement, conquest, colonialism, the genocide of indigenous peoples. There are literally millions of human beings whose lives have been snuffed out by people who conquered under the banner of a white god. That is a far more significant problem than whether a black writer in 2013 suggests somewhat humorously, but perhaps seriously, that we should change Santa to a penguin. Yeah. No one's going to die because of that iconography. The white Jesus this white god imagery has literally resulted in death. That's yeah. something folks ought to deal with. What Megyn Kelly said was very simply, quote, Santa is white, end of quote, and so is Jesus. So I think the real issue is, you know, if you want to make a joke about Santa's whiteness, here's a way to do it that would not presume white normalcy or that white is the norm. You could say, for instance, and I would, that if there were Santa, he'd have to be white because no black man could break into millions of homes, even if he was bearing presents, and not be shot by some neighborhood watch captain. That's a way to be funny, but Fox News would never do that because that would presume that they had to admit racial profiling and racism were real. So there's that. I think the real issue is that she made a statement of fact, not for her own opinion, but fact. There's a difference between believing in Santa and believing in Jesus or the Buddha. Buddha did not come from Kansas. Jesus was not born in a manger in central Pennsylvania. He was a man of color, and the fact that we have represented him for centuries, literally as a white man, speaks to the entire history of of white supremacy. We can act like it didn't happen. We can make it the punchline of a joke. But the reality is this iconography, Jesus more so than Santa, I agree with Mel here, Jesus more so than Santa is a real problem. There's a reason we've represented these okay. icons as white. It's not a coincidence that we've done that. Okay, do you think there's something inherently wrong? I understand you saying that a white Jesus has been used to, to, to do horrible things. But here's, here's the difference. And Reza, okay. Reza is right. No, Reza's right, but the difference is that the power of others to make Jesus or to make Christ as they view him has never come, come close to the power of the European power to make Jesus white. In other words, black folks can think Jesus is black and view Christ as black, but at the end of the day, the image that has been used to dominate Christianity in this world and on this planet is the white image. So therefore, you can believe, you, you can think Jesus looks like whatever you want or that Christ looks like whatever you want. Ultimately, though, there is such a thing as power and it's not equitable, and so if certain people have been able to impose their image of the Christ, of the Savior on others, or God, or Adam and Eve, the first human beings ostensibly as white people, to believe that that doesn't have an effect is to believe that advertising doesn't have an effect. It's to okay. believe that companies that spend billions of dollars don't actually sell you stuff based on the images they use, which is nonsense. I found it quite interesting, actually. Um... But um, the only thing I wish she hadn't have done is interrupted the gentleman who was trying to ask a question because it gives the impression that it, he's talking out of his ego more than anything else. But he made some very, very valid points. Now, he's responding to Megan Kelly, who's an American journalist. And she uh, mentioned this in an interview in 2013, but every year it gets brought up, every Christmas. And this gentleman has brought it up again this year. So I wanted to share that with you. Um, whether Santa is white or black, as black people, we wouldn't want him to be black anyway, um, because his roots are pagan. Um, it comes from a line of, I mean, even the word Old Nick is an old-fashioned name for the devil, Lucifer, um, hell, and goodness knows what else. So it has negative connotations in its roots. It's been, the, the pagans have then Christianized it to make it him seem like a very loving, caring, giving um, person now in today's times for children.
But back in the day, it wasn't like that. Children were terrified of being bad because they had these demons that accompanied um, Santa Claus. And they, if their child hadn't been good, they, there was threats of abduction and all kinds of horrible things that they were doing to children. So it has its roots in devil worship, idolatry and that kind of stuff. So no, Megan Kelly, we don't even want um, Santa Claus to be black. Thank you very much. Talking about Jesus now. Well, that goes without question. He's born in um, Bethlehem. He's born in a hot country. Of course, he's black. Um, so um, olive skin, black, whatever they want to call it. It doesn't really matter. And um, that gentleman was talking about it does make a difference how he has even if black people don't think of Jesus as being black, the fact that he's been portrayed as, as white from goodness knows when has a subconscious effect. My mother has a white Jesus on her wall. and But I firmly believe that um, it's not like she looks at him and, you know, oh, Jesus, Jesus, blah, blah, blah. When she is praying or when she is um, talking about her relationship with Christ or God, it's a personal relationship. I don't believe that colour even comes into it. I don't believe God is a man of colour. I believe he transcends colour and the Christ also. So it doesn't really matter what colour Christ is. And to put um, Christ in the same in the same conversation as Santa is actually an insult but there again maybe it's not an insult because where there's good there's always evil and if Santa represents the devil and God or Jesus represents good then there's every reason probably why the two why Megan Kelly um, raised the fact that they were both white in the same sentence it doesn't really matter. Who cares? I went into a shop the other day and they had a chocolate Santa, a black Santa. And I thought, oh, that's nice. When I looked at it, a little black Santa. And then I thought, hold on a minute. Yeah, it's a black Santa. But do I really want it? No. It looked cute. I could identify with it. But not with the little red hat on and the little fur around and the little big belly. Nah, that's not my idea of how a giver would look. Or my version of somebody who was um, doing good. That's not my image of how he would look. When I was a child, yeah, it was great having a Santa. And once again, you know, you didn't, it kind of didn't come into it. It was the act of giving. And we put our little stockings on the mantelpiece at the time. And, you know, in the morning it'd be filled with chocolates and clementine oranges. But, that was it. We might get a Monopoly game or something. But we never ever thought about what colour the giver was. And today, Christmas should be about giving, but not to the extent where it puts you in debt. Giving in the sense you're giving of your spirit, you're giving of your time. You know, if you can't afford it, you shouldn't be made to spend on things you cannot afford. It's got out of control. Everything you see advertised on the TVs now, it's like a new bed. Your the poor husband might be thinking, oh yeah, my, my wife could do with a new bed. 699 quid, a new car. Oh, you know, that, you know, my wife needs a new car. Maybe, a, you know, a new game for your child. £399, a new TV. Where does it stop? And they make it look as though it's cheap only. And then by comparison. Oh, I've got to stop now. I've got a phone call. I'm sorry. Bye bye.